Welcome to worship. It is so good to be together, and it is a glorious day to be the church. Let us begin with our call to worship. Blessed be the Lord, for, for God, God has, has shown, shown us favor. favor. God has sent a Savior to, to deliver, deliver us from fear. fear. God has shown us mercy and, and kept, kept the ancient, ancient promise. promise. Blessed be the Lord. For God, God has, has shown, shown us, us favor. favor. confess our sins before God and one another. Risen Lord, we, we admit, admit that we are slow to, to believe and even, and even slower, slower to follow, follow where you lead us. us. We, we doubt your promise, divide, divide your people, and fail to proclaim the power of your resurrection. resurrection. We choose, we choose to live small lives when, when you have given us the, the biggest, biggest gift of all, your, your eternal life. Forgive, forgive us, raise us up, up to a place where we can serve you faithfully. Dear friends, Christ is arisen, bringing gifts of life, mercy, and pardon for sin. Believe that you are forgiven and go out and live in the joy of your Lord's resurrection in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. Loving God, the, the only, only law, law you, you demand, demand is the, is law, the law of love. love. By, By your, your grace, show us the path we are to are follow, to, follow to, to spread your message of mercy and, and live lives of, of discipleship, discipleship after your, your son, son Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hi, kids. I hope you're having a good morning or day wherever you're at. Good to be with you this morning. Have you ever had somebody do something for you without any strings? You know, I was at the 
shake store here in town. And uh, I came in and there was a person sitting at the counter uh, finishing up their shake for the morning. And uh, we started talking, her and the person behind the counter. And over the course of the time of us talking, all of a sudden she turned and looked at me and said, you know what, I'm going to buy your shake today. I didn't ask her to do that. I was surprised, but I was very thankful and very graceful that she was so generous to me. Sometimes that's kind of the little thing we need in our life to make our day seem that much better. I had a great day after that. It was everything just looked so much better because somebody just gave me this unconditional gift. You know, we get something unconditional from God every day of our life. A gift. God loves us. God doesn't say that he'll only love us if we're really good. God doesn't say he'll only love us if we're at church every week. God doesn't say he'll only love us if we make sure we eat our spinach and broccoli. Actually, I'm kind of glad that God doesn't put that rule on, right? No, God says, I love you all the time. My love has no condition. There's nothing that you can do that will make me love you more or love you less. It's a wonderful gift. It's this gift that comes to us because of what Jesus did. It was in love that Jesus came and that Jesus goes to the cross and dies for us. No strings attached. A gift given in love. Well, today we're going to hear again from that book of Galatians that we were in last week. And in our book of Galatians today, Paul is trying to teach the Galatian people that there's nothing that they have to do in order to be better followers of Jesus. That God loves them just the way they are. They don't have to pretend to be somebody else or do something that others want them to do. All they got to do is be them. And when they are them, God says, you are the best you you can be. So friends, today, I want you to think about that. I want you to think about how much God loves you, loves you just the way you are. And today, I want you to go out and be the best you you can be, knowing that God's going to love you, and he's going to love you again tomorrow in the same way. Have a great day, kids. See you later. Our scripture reading for this Sunday comes from the book of Galatians, the third chapter. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly exhibited as crucified. The only thing I want to learn from you is this. Did you receive the Spirit by doing the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? Having started with the Spirit, are you now ending with the flesh? Do you experience so much for nothing? If it really was for nothing? Well then, does God supply you with the Spirit that work miracles among you, but you're doing the works of the law, by your doing the works of the law, or by your believing what you've heard? Just as Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, so you see those who believe are the descendants of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, declared the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, All the Gentiles shall be blessed in you. For this reason, those who believe are blessed with, are blessed with Abraham who believed. Now, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith, that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are the children of God through faith. As many of you were, as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male 
and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. How'd you do last week? Were you good at being an influencer? Did you let God's word speak through you and through your actions? Or did you find yourself at time being influenced by some of other sources? You know, when we left the story last week in Galatians, Paul was trying to encourage the Galatian people to be that type of influencers with the gospel. He was reminding them that the gospel is free. That there isn't anything that holds people back. He was even reminding them that God loves them, just like I said to the kids. God loves them just as they are. This whole notion of circumcision that, that they're trying to put into this new church, Paul says, that's not you. That's never been you. Paul wants them to be the best them they can be. Well, it was all sounded good in the first two chapters, right? But now we get to chapter 3. Chapter 3 of Galatians. The fa my favorite starting verses of any section of the Bible. You know? I mean, if, if we were good Norwegians, it would start this way. You knuckleheads. Right? That's what he's saying to them. You knuckleheads. What are you doing? Who are you listening to? When I was there, because you see, Paul was there right away. Paul was there with Barnabas and Titus. They got excited because the Holy Spirit was working through them. They were excited because they heard a gospel that was free, that there were no strings attached, that they had a God that loved them just the way they were, Gentile and all. But now came another voice, a voice of one who is of status, who was an influencer, that being Peter. And Peter is saying that, you know what, maybe this whole idea of circumcision needs to happen. So you good people of Galatia, it's time for you to line up. It's time for you to be circumcised in order to be good followers of Jesus. And Peter and Paul are not going to agree on this. We talked about that last week. But this message now, instead of the argument with Peter, this message now is coming straight to the people of Galatia. This is Paul <clears throat> writing out to them words of not just hope, but words that are trying to influence them again. Words that are trying to get them to come back to the truth, to that reality. He couldn't say it any plainer. What saved you, Galatia? What saved you from your sinful ways? Was it the law of the Jews? The law found in Judaism? Is that what saved you? Because none of you are Jewish. So that couldn't have saved you. What saved you? You are justified by your faith. It's going to take the Galatian people a while to understand this, to grasp this notion that we don't have to do something in order to get God to love us. You know, this was written so long ago, but it could be written today as well. Oh, you foolish Americans, right? You knuckleheads. What do you think you're doing? You think you have to impress God by building these big, gigantic churches? You, you have to impress God by looking a certain way, acting a certain way? You think God's going to love you more because you say God's name more than anybody else? No. Friends, that message to the people of Galatia can also come back to us today. How many times in your life do you feel like you're not good enough? That somehow you don't measure up to what God wants? You know, we've got different voices, don't we? We have different voices in our society that come under the voice of being the church. So many different denominations 
all claiming to have the gospel. And, and here's what's great about that. That's, I think, how God sort of envisioned this all to be. That the gospel could be central and our approach to it could be varied. The gospel staying central, the gospel being this, there's nothing you can do to make God love you more or love you less. But along the way, even the church at times gets it mixed up. Sometimes the church allows its church laws, its church rules to get in the way of that gospel, of that good news, of that message that was so vital for the church of Galatia to hear and is so vital for you and I to hear today. That God loves us. All of our messes up, all the mess ups we do, God still loves us. Even on those days where we forget to even think about God, God says, I still love you. Even those days where it's a lot more fun to be out fishing or playing some golf than being in church, God says, hey, I still love you, but if you would go on Monday, you would have gotten a three instead of a four on that hole. Just kidding. That's the central message of the gospel. Paul wanted the Gentiles of Galatia to be the best Gentiles they could. And Paul wanted his friends and his family, because Paul was Jewish. Paul wanted them to be the best Jewish people they could be. Paul wanted both sides and all of us to recognize that both sides possess the importance of honesty, the importance of integrity, the importance of acceptance, the importance of tolerance. Now, we may come at them from different ways, but they can be cornerstones that we can all agree on. In a time in which our world seems more focused on things that divide us, now more than ever, this gospel has to be proclaimed. Now more than ever, we have to hear that we're good enough in the eyes of God, whether we be from Minnesota or Oklahoma, the Dakotas or Texas, whether our skin be pale white as a good Norwegian or dark chocolate like my Haitian sensation daughter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. In the eyes of God, we're good enough. Now, others may have other ideas on how to do things, and that's okay. God says, let them be them, but you be you. So, friends, be you this week. Last week, I asked you to be an influencer. Today, I want you to take it to a new level just by being you, genuine. When we're being ourselves, God will do mighty things. When we're being ourselves, we can be better influencers. When we're being ourselves, our life is so much better. Live that life knowing that God loves you for who you are. Amen. As children of the Heavenly Father, safely Such a refuge there was given. God his own doth tend and nourish. In his holy courts they flourish. From all evil things he spares them. In his mighty arms he bears them. Oh,
Let us confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Good and gracious God, by grace alone, you have delivered us, so let our proclamation be one of freedom and not of restriction. May the witness of our lives show forth your love and not our own preoccupation with unimportant matters. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Empower those who write and enact laws that your justice might rule their hearts and inspire them to protect and defend all people for the good of our peaceful coexistence upon this planet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. There is no division between us and them, insider or outsider, human and creature in your kingdom, O God. Unite us all under your law of love, and may it be our guiding principle as we carve out relationships of mutual benefit. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Send your spirit's comfort to those who have suffered from hate crimes and other extreme forms of discrimination. Heal our relationships with ourselves and others, that we would no longer find it necessary to lash out in the face of difference. Mend the broken ones and tend those in need, especially those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, those who are hospitalized or homeless or homebound, those who are hungry or lonely or grieving losses. We pray for those needs and concerns also, dear Lord, that weigh heavy upon our hearts, and we lay them before you now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear your our prayer. prayer. For all your saints in light, we give you thanks and pray that you would count us among them when you bring us into your final kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Incline your ear to our prayers and fill us with power to begin living out our faith by the power of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who taught us how to pray. Our, our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and to give you peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for worshiping with us today. It is a great day to be together as the church. And remember that we are the church wherever we may be. So go in love and peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be, be to God. God.